guys, what's up? Sherry here from No Effects Giving Crew. What's up? Sherry here. Oh, yeah, I spilt coffee all over my cards. That's why they're down there. I'm just getting ready to do the reading for today. I just wanted to show you that I actually changed my view, my table. So now you can see the mountain up in the corner there. Beautiful day out in BC today. See you in a bit. Hi, guys. How's it going? Okay, I hope you're doing great. Um, so this is going to be a Twin Flame reading for March the 12th until the 19th. And I haven't used that John Holland deck for a long time, so let's do that. So this is John Holland, Psychic Tarot of the Heart. I'll use that for the masculine side. So I'll pull the cards first. Okay, and then the John Holland Psychic Tarot for the feminine side. So yeah, those were pretty heavy energies last week. Um, I was definitely feeling it myself. I needed to shut down Facebook j just for a little while to um, get my center, and I feel absolutely fantastic for taking a little break. Okay. Is that too far? Alright, now for the Union Energy, let's use my deck. I think I'm going to pull one clarifier per position. Okay, so let's begin with the feminine's past position. Five of Swords, Conflict and Defeat. So this could represent your energy or somebody in your environment. Um, so we have a masculine who's walking towards a flame, towards this warmth, uh, this light in the darkness. And he's descending the stairs. You know, so there's a movement away from light, but the light over here is overpowering. And he's, he's moving towards stillness, right? Simplicity. So I'm just going to pull one card. Seven of Swords. So this is all mental. Swords is the mind, thought, communication. So the seven in my deck represents, you know, somebody getting away with something. Somebody sneaking around in the middle of the night, not facing their problems. Um, not being able to trust people. So I'm feeling this is a feminine. Um, possibly feeling the masculine coming towards her, but not being able to trust. Uh, you know, there's this baggage that he's bringing with him. Uh, you know, so she's kind of questioning, 
you know, whether his motives are pure or if his intentions are pure if, or if he's planning on doing something to hurt her. So this is coming in in the past. So let's carry on. So what's in the masculine's past position? Heart chakra. Aww. Beautiful. So the masculine has been really connecting with their heart space. Um, feeling love deeply. This is beautiful to see on the masculine side. For a long time, the masculine has been closing themselves off to love. And here, you know, he's embracing it. And it's not just love for his, you know, divine counterpart. It's for all, you know, unconditional love. And for some reason, I want to pull the top card on the Osho Zen. Beyond Illusion. So there's been an awakening with the masculine. Um, he's beginning to see things clearly from a more uplifting standpoint, from a more illuminated standpoint. And that's been the driving force in helping him to ascend. And I was just noticing that this card is one of the cards on the front of this, this uh, book. So let me just read that for you. You'll have to trust that it was just a random card at the top of the deck. I have no idea what was there. So this is, I believe, the Judgment card. Okay. So it says, the butterfly in this card represents the outer, that which is constantly moving and that which is not real but an illusion. Behind the butterfly is the face of consciousness looking inward to that which is eternal. The space between the two eyes has opened, revealing the lotus of spiritual enfoldment and the rising sun of awareness. Through the rising of the inner sun, meditation is born. The card reminds us not to look outside for the real, but to look within. When we focus on the externals, we too often get caught up with judgments. This is good. This is bad. I want this. I don't want that. These judgments keep us trapped in our illusions, our sleep, our sleepiness, our old habits and patterns. Drop your opinionated head and move inside. There you can relax into your own deepest truth, where the difference between dreams and reality is already known. So, you know, this is waking up to, I think, like the pleasures of the 3D reality, realizing, you know, um, you're waking up to your true self. And if you feel whole and complete within, there's nothing out there that you can really, you know, need or desire. So this is like a grand awakening. It's the old self being burnt away uh, and the rising of consciousness. So the masculine, it's absolutely beautiful that we have the third eye chakra wide open, the heart chakra wide open, you know, and there's such a beautiful, peaceful look on his face, very different from what we're seeing on the feminine side. You can probably hear kids playing outside um, right in front of a park there, so. Okay, can you see those? All right, so what is in the feminine's present position? Transformation. I love it because we have two butterflies. Over here, we got a beautiful representation, I can't talk, representation of a masculine right, with the third eye chakra open, and then we got the exact same thing. If you can see here in the background, this feminine has butterfly wings, and she's rising from the chrysalis. So she is being transformed. She's coming out of the mind. I don't know if you can see, there's a, a grayed out statue-like uh, figure in the corner, and she's coming out of the crown chakra, being reborn out of the mind. Love, 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 love to see that. Oh, I got this one over too far. There we go. Okay, 
So, you know what, since I did the, I pulled from the Osho Zen, let me do the same for the feminine. Or should I pull one for, no, let's pull, I'm, I'm feeling guided to pull one for the present position, transformation. So that's the death card. It's death of the ego, death of the old identity. And we can see a lot of ego happening in the, in the past position there. Okay. So fighting. Okay. So this card shows a masculine who is covered in armor. And each of these buttons um, can detonate a bomb. So he's ready to go off at any time. So let me just read that. So what I feel is she's losing the armor. She's releasing the ego. Hold on, I'll find it. Oh, there we go. Okay, so I'm just going to read the short version. One moment it was there, another moment it was gone. One moment we are here, and another moment we have gone. And for this simple moment, how much fuss we make, how much violence, ambition, struggle, conflict, anger, hatred, just for this small moment, just waiting for the train in a waiting room on a station and creating so much fuss, fighting, hurting each other, trying to possess, trying to boss, trying to dominate, all that politics. And then the train comes and you're gone forever. Wow, I got shivers. So, you know, this is really pointing to the mind and being in that head space and, you know, all of this conflict, all of this anger and fighting is happening within yourself. It's not, hop it's not coming from the external world. This chaos is, is within yourself and the world is a reflection of what's happening within. So I feel the feminine is, um, you know, if this is the masculine, because there is a masculine being represented here, she is, um, you know, uh, rising above any conflict that she might be feeling with the masculine. But really, I feel this is the feminine wearing that armor, and she's rising from the chrysalis, from that hardened, um, you know, protective layer or armor. Okay, so what's in the masculine? It's present. Shine. Wow, the sun card. Very beautiful. So the 19 reduces to 1, so it's a new beginning. And so now we see this beautiful light coming from um, the solar plexus chakra. There's power, strength. Uh, the sun card represents all of the most positive emotions. So I see a rebirth here and th this excitement for life, right? He's beginning a new adventure and he's feeling excited about it. He's feeling free, liberated. Okay, so one card from my deck. Did I shuffle these ones? No, I didn't, so let's pull this. Wow, the 1111 card, boom. So we got a one with an 1111. So, in the present moment, the masculine, um, you know, he, I'm feeling that a great, you know, large percentage of masculine are really coming into this understanding of the twin flame connection and how it illuminates the consciousness, right? We come together to ascend, to, um, you know, help others find their way, be light workers. And, you know, that's what I feel very strongly is him finding his power as a light worker. The sun is also masculine energy. And um, so he, I also feel that he's drawing great strength and power from this connection, uh, feeling a lot of love. Yeah, just very powerful energy. Okay, so what is in the near future for the feminine? 
mental conflict back in the mind again. So this is cognitive dissonance. It's having ch two choices and, you know, both either feel right or feel wrong. Um, one you may be forced to be forced to do, the other one you, you feel drawn to. You know, it's not being able to move, feeling stuck. And so, you know, it's mental conflict in the mind. Down here is conflict and defeat, fighting. Um, so let's pull a confirmation, the Ten of Pentacles. So the Ten of Pentacles is a long-term goal manifested into the 3D. Um, this is not having to prove yourself anymore. You have already attained this great wealth. You're financially stable for the future. This is retirement. So you're represented as somebody who's extremely grounded, who's a caregiver, but you know, they're not only concerned about the well-being of their family and their, you know, their friends in the present moment, but long-term as well. They want to make sure they succeed as well and that they're looked after after they're gone. But, you know, this here is the ultimate completion of your, your goal and having it manifested into the 3D reality. And so this vision, this ideal happy ending, you know, is it the thing that's creating the mental conflict in the feminine's mind? She feels, you know, she can't manifest it fully. So let's pull a clarifier. What to do? Um, I don't know why, but... Um, oop, Barry by Lenormand is calling to me, so let me just give this a little shuffle. Do you have any additional messages for the Two of Swords and Ten of Pentacles? So the Two of Swords is crossroads, being stuck, and the Ten of Pentacles is the completion of a major cycle. Stop. Okay, so this card is one of wisdom, and it's innocence... Uh, the purity of a soul, an innocence of a soul that comes from attaining wisdom, you know, and this wisdom takes a lifetime to attain. So we got that, you know, old wise soul sitting here in both of these pictures. And... Like, I'm feeling so much groundedness, so much, you know, centeredness and ambition um, to attain this, but there's no movement. There's feeling stuck. So, obviously, the armor is still playing a role in the feminine's life. She, you know, she's trying to break open her mind, trying to find resolution. So, what's in the near future with the masculine? Seek. The hermit. So this comes, this card shows up when you need to retreat. There's a lot of chaos um, happening in the 3D reality and you find stillness or solitude in order to make some decisions. So this card is also one of wisdom, right? This person goes on a spiritual journey, they attain a great deal of wisdom through solitude, through silence. Uh, and then they return, you know, with the answers. Uh, they're also way showers as well, so they help others. So what I'm feeling here is meditation, a lot of meditation. You know, it's that same peaceful look on the masculine's face in every single card. Going within, finding the answers within, shining his light, helping others. Um, so it's beautiful meditative energy absolute opposite of what I'm seeing on the feminine side. Um, perhaps she's viewing the masculine as this wise soul who is conflicted and wants answers or wants a vision solidified of the future. So let's just pull a confirmation card for that. 
the Knight of Pentacles. So this is my favorite knight. He always arrives at his destination. These are both earth cards, earth energy, being connected to earth. Um, you know, the Knight of Pentacles is a very slow movement, calculated, but he always arrives at his destination. So there's this sense of solitude in the near future, but there's movement at the same time. Um, it's like he gets up from it, that meditative pose after gaining this wisdom, after, you know, absorbing the universe's energy um, and the love of the feminine, you know, through the divine connection. And he gets up like this solid rock and he starts moving forward inch by inch. But this knight always arrives at his destination. That's why I love him. So before we do the final outcome, let's move into the union energy. So what's a masculine bringing into the union? The page of wands, page of fire, excitement, great news, great communication. Uh, so he may have received some kind of communication about the feminine or he may have heard some great news that is starting him off on a new adventure. And you can see this excitement over and over, this power, this um, love right and this vibrancy is coming from a very positive source right it's so much purity here and innocence and excitement but it's coming from an inner space so this is very similar energy to the pay or sorry the fool card right so you're starting a new adventure you're taking this chance you are um eager to begin Right, and it's, there's a lot of playfulness here, so that's that's awesome. So one card, wow, the sun again, same card, wow. So again, the most positive card in the deck, masculine energy, um, be new beginnings here. Oh my God, that's such a beautiful feeling that I'm I'm getting from this. He is bringing strength, excitement, love, every positive emotion that you can imagine into the union and, and you know, new beginning. That's how it feels about the connection. Where is it? Oh my God, get in there. Okay. So what is the feminine bringing in? Nice, the nine of cups, wish fulfilled. So even though the feminine is in her mind a lot this week, she is, you know, in terms of the union, she's excited about it, she's celebrating it, she feels love, she feels joy. Um, nine is nearing the completion of a cycle so she's almost at the ten of cups which is peace harmony uh happily ever after so this is what she's bringing into the union for this um coming week celebration and love very similar energy here just uh you know getting up and dancing and you know feeling feeling love and excitement so one card wow crown chakra that's beautiful to see. And, you know, it, she's in her own mental space here, but in terms of the union, she has a deep knowing about this connection. It, again, illuminates her. She will be gaining great insights from the connection if she lives in this space of love. So this card means I know and it's also one of meditation as well. I've been doing a lot of meditation, especially this past week. And uh, I've forgotten how, how good it makes you feel. The vibration um, energizes your body and I always feel so happy when I'm, when I'm done. So yeah, um, you know, if you don't know how to meditate, all you need to do is just Find a dark space, lay down on a bed, close your eyes, and get in, in touch with the vibration that you're feeling around you. You should feel a tingling. You should feel warmth. 
um, some people see, you know, dancing lights. I see, um, I actually see like a purple kind of um, vortex with the blue in my mind's eye. And then, you know, it changes colors. It, it, it um, pulsates. It folds in on itself. And, um, you know, in terms of the vibration, I, f I start with my toes. I feel the vibration in there and then it moves up my legs as it hits each chakra, it becomes stronger and stronger until it gets to my third eye. Then I feel this vibration, you know, between um, the crown, or sorry, the bridge of your nose, just right in this area, you should feel vibration. I feel it in my sinuses as well. And then that's when I start to see visuals. Right, and so this energy, when it gets strong enough, it moves to the, the crown chakra, which is, you know, almost at the top towards the back of the head, right above the um, pineal gland. And once that opens, you're in this, all I can say, all I can describe it as is the, vo the void. You're in this timeless thoughtless space of consciousness you are here you might have to watch a video a couple times just to understand how you know there's how like um I've, i'm lost for words you know it's being connected with yourself uh, the the thing behind the eye that is yourself, consciousness, and it's love. You know, this, these two cards are mirroring this energy down here very strongly. Okay, so what is at the foundation? The Four of Cups. Um, so this is, you know, we have somebody sitting at the window windowsill and they're looking out the window and they're longing they're thinking out of thinking about a person they're contemplating they're you know wondering where they went wrong wondering if that person is thinking of them it's disconnect boredom stagnation feeling like things aren't moving so as a foundation this is the energy that's shared between both aspects you know and we can see that energy being reflected over here as well maybe somebody walked away from somebody but I, you know I'm not seeing the masculine doing that I'm seeing the feminine walking away because she doesn't trust okay so I'm going to pull one card each for the feminine first is there you go five of swords same card and for the masculine six of cups so we have a four to a six so the masculine is in a higher vibration um, he's been thinking about the feminine, this is memories, wanting to reconnect with her, reunion, somebody from the past coming back. So there's a desire to reunite, feeling disconnected, wanting to reconnect. Whereas the feminine is bringing in the five of swords, same card, conflict, defeat, finger pointing, pushing somebody's buttons, pushing away. And it's, these are all thoughts in her head. Okay, so what's the crowning energy? Nice. King of Cups. King of Love. Kurt Cobain. So this is somebody who loves so deeply that it hurts them. Now, this is also somebody who is balanced emotionally and mentally we got the green with the um, the blue which is air and emotions so this is somebody who is not emotionally manipulated who isn't afraid to express themselves you know their emotions their feelings in fact they draw those aspects that, that beautiful part of a person out of people you know they're the type of person that helps you get connected with yourself emotionally. They're the type of people that create a family environment, a home environment, you know, at work or, you know, they create this team 
mentality. So as a crowning energy, the feminine and masculine want this for the, the union, emotional stabili stability and mental stability. And we can see that duality being played out in these cards. Um, you know, the feminine needs to get control of the mental space and, and connecting with her heart is the answer to that. Being open with your emotions, not closing off, not pointing fingers. Um, so let's just pull the clarifier, see what's going on. Okay, so the Queen of Pentacles and the Solar Plexus. So a lot of fire, solar plexus energy over here. So a mirroring again with, you know, these cards here, all three of them actually. So the, the masculine wants to clear his blockages find courage and strength and power in order to express his emotions fully. The feminine has the queen of pentacles. So this is somebody, you know, this is earth energy. Um, this is somebody who's very successful, who's open, who is generous, gives of herself. She loves nature. She, um, she's mother earth. You know, she's the mother. She looks after people creates a beautiful, stable home. So as a crowning energy, the feminine wants to feel this way. She wants to feel grounded. She wants to connect with the masculine, possibly in the 3D reality, you know, with the, the loving masculine side. She wants to give of herself. That's all I see. I feel that very strongly. She wants to give of herself. Share herself with the masculine in the 3D. Okay, so let's check out the heart space. Wow, destiny's calling. So this is a shift. Things starting to turn in your favor. So the, at the heart space, uh, both aspects feel drawn to one another. The 10 is the completion of a cycle. So one cycle is ending, so a new cycle can begin. And um, yeah, so let's pull a clarifier. The devil, lovers, wow. This energy is being repeated over and over again. There's the ego, the feminine is really trying hard to release the ego. So this could also be a codependent relationship, an addiction, an attachment of some kind. Something's holding you back in 3D. Although you're feeling drawn to this connection, you feel a great deal of love and gaining a great deal of illumination, you're still weighed down by the ego, by the mind. And this is in the heart space. This is not a good energy to have in your heart space. So the masculine is bringing in the lover's card. You can see that love, that passion that he feels, that, that desire, that desire to connect and feel love. And he feels destined. But the feminine is blocked this week. So let's see what the final outcome is and hopefully the feminine is able to overcome that. But she's using this connection to, to see those limiting aspects of herself, right? This connection is meant to trigger you, to break down those barriers. Okay, so a final outcome for the feminine. Wow, six of swords in reverse. Or sorry, the nine of swords in reverse. So suffering in silence. So we see this person who has gone off on their own. Um, you know, they've been consumed with nightmares, night terrors, you know, worry, guilt, fear. So this person is, has climbed this large mountain. They're sitting on a precipice and they're looking at the sun rising, right? So the nine is nearing the completion of a cycle. So as a final outcome, she is ending that struggle. Now it is in reverse. 
So this could be a dark night of the soul, feeling like she's lost control of her reality, lost control of her thoughts, feels, you know, that there will be no end. Completely opposite energy that we see here, right? Peacefulness. Um, we got that longing, uh, looking out rather than looking in. Okay, so one card. Eight of Swords. <clears throat> she feels like she's caught in a mental prison. Okay, so I don't want to leave it at that. Um, so let's pull one card from the Osho Zen. Past lives. So the moon. So let me read that. My cards are a little warped from getting them wet. My leg is falling asleep. Ugh. Okay. Um... So the masculine kept getting the sun, the feminine keep, or has gotten the moon. So the moon is feminine energy, but let's see what this says. So the child can become conscious only if in his past life he has meditated enough. There you go with that meditation again and again. Um, let me just repeat that. So the child can become conscious only if in the past life he has meditated enough, has created enough meditative energy to fight with the darkness, the death that death brings. So there's that death of the ego, death of the 3D body. So one simply is lost in an oblivion and then suddenly finds a new womb and forgets completely about the old body. There is a discontinuity. The darkness, the unconsciousness creates this discontinuity. The East has been working hard to penetrate these barriers. And 10,000 years work has not been in vain. Everybody can penetrate to the past or many past lives. But for that, you have to go deeper into meditation for two reasons. Unless you go deeper, you cannot find the door to another life. Secondly, you have to be deeper in meditation because if you find the door of another life, a flood of events will come into mind. It is hard enough even to carry one life. Okay, so um, again, pointing strongly to meditation. This whole reading is very um, directed towards that purpose. So that as a final outcome, the feminine is going to find peace, deal with um, her ego, deal with these past lives, deal with the conditioning, you know, and put an end to it once and for all. Release herself from that mental state. Final outcome for the masculine, it nice. Wow, of course, right? The emperor, Yang. This ascended path leads to the Divine Masculine finding his truth, becoming his true authentic self. That's where the Emperor um, gets his power from, his authenticity. And you can see him, you know, rising in consciousness and then coming back to the earth, standing up, moving forward one step at a time to, you know, to take his, his place. And here we have him facing forward now, his eyes are open. Oh my God, I love it. The strength card. So this card is all about taming the beast within. The Emperor is somebody who is very extroverted. We see the Sun twice, very powerful masculine energy being represented over here. Uh, the Emperor is also, you know, very loving. Um, he has balance in all areas, right? He is the King of Swords, the King of Cups, um, the, the King of Wands, and the King of, oh my God, Pentacles. All balanced with him, within himself. And he was able to... Uh, he is able to come to this place because he tamed that lion, that fire within himself. 
you know, this is calming or taming the beast within in order to transmute a negative environment into more gentle, loving, caring, nurturing environment. All right, so what is at the bottom of the deck? Temperance, patience. Okay, so the Temperance card is the ultimate union card for Twin Flames. So it's the souls coming back together. She's the S in the yin and yang. This card is also being about, uh, is about being in the now, being in this moment, right? And I read about that earlier on. So this is also about finding balance in all areas of your life. Mentally, emotionally, spiritually, physically. Okay, so we can see that struggle happening on both sides. The, the masculine is finding that balance and attains that balance. The feminine really struggling with, you know, this vision that she might be holding on to and that she, she has been closing herself off mentally um, because of it. And so she frees herself and ultimately attains that balance, right? Because this is what this coming week is all about. It's about finding that balance and being patient. You know, not having any attachments, not putting any pressures on anybody, not feeling guilty or, or accusing people of hurting you. Right? The ego is uh, right there. Um, and she's not going to go away until the feminine release her cut the chain beautiful all right so let's pull two cards so what do I want to pull them from I'm getting kind of um, tired of missing mermaids so I'm just gonna pull a random card up here for the masculine message in a bottle and for the feminine wide open beautiful perfect messages so feminine I'll read yours first number 42 so I hope you guys can hear me you're on a tripod this time usually I have you on a table with a smaller tripod but Okay, so it says, wide open. So this is what the universe is asking you to do. You are free to express your uniqueness to the world and share all the bounty of life's endless possibilities. All manner of opportunities are pres presented to you at this time. The wide open card is a signal. You're able to truly manifest your dreams and your goals are in sight. Don't remain small and contracted. Instead, expand your horizons beyond what you believe to be your limitations. You have a unique voice that needs to be expressed to the world. The universe is supportive of new ideas and approaches at this time. So speak up and speak out. This card is a sign of a maverick who is freely, who's freely roams the wide open spaces of possibility. Allow for a greater vision to replace old ideas as you dream a grander dream. Okay, so here, you know, in terms of the connection, you feel that your twin flame or the, th the person you're thinking about brings you a lot of love and they are your dreams coming true. But mentally, you are contracted. And so Spirit is asking you to open up, release yourself from that prison. So number 15 for the masculine. Oh, the Ten of Wands just fell out. So the Ten of Wands is burden, carrying all the responsibility, feeling like you need to be a martyr, feeling like a victim also. Uh, so yeah, the burden needs to be put down and open up. All right, so number 15. So the meaning, communication, a sign, a cledon, uh, the ancient name for a spontaneous oracle delivered innocently by a speaker, pointing the way to your highest good. 
So the relationship message. You can expect someone to favor you with positive news. This could be in the form of letter, phone call, or email. You are the intended receiver of this message. So stay open to what you learn. Only good will come of it in the end. The signs are all there. So we see that good news, that great news coming. And then we have also the 1111 card, which is, you know, a tw twin flame uh, synchronicity, right? It's seeing the 1111 on the clock, um, hearing somebody's name when, you, when you're thinking of them. So I'm actually going to read the Oracle message as well. Spirit sends you a sign when you ask for them. When you believe, you will receive them. And when you allow yourself to become fluent in the language of symbols, oracles, and omens, they may come to you as a bird flying by, a logo on a truck, and a song on the radio. Expect confirmation that you're pointed in the right direction. Keep your ears open for someone might say just the right thing that will give you the answer to your query. Today your message is this, spirit hears you and the reply is favorable. Wow, exactly, right? That synchronicity, it awakens the masculine into his consciousness, full, authentic self. Beautiful reading. Oh my God, I'm excited about it. Okay guys, so um, please leave a comment. Um, I use your comments to gauge whether or not I'm on the right track and I absolutely love them. Your, your support just means the world to me and thank you for your donations to the channel. I put my donations button up below and I, I was just blown away when I went to check my emails that there's all these donations. Thank you guys. Um, and yeah, so don't forget to like, subscribe and share. All right. See you soon.